Welcome back. Before we get into a sample test question, let's continue our review. This has got a little bit of everything we've discussed. We're taking acetylene and taking its H off, its proton off with this base, which I want to remind you is H minus. So we're taking a pKa that was 25. and making a molecule with a pKa of 35. pKeq is 25 minus 35 equals negative 10. Keq equals 10 to the 10. Okay. Definitely a good yield. You're gonna get 10 to the power of 10 of these for every one of those. That's what that ratio is. And molecule T is acetylide right there, down here. It's gonna do a backside attack on this carbon with a leaving group and make a sigma bond that's molecule U. So we got our HC triple C with a new sigma bond, very exciting, to this isopentyl group, one, two, three, four, V. And that is molecule U. And molecule U is a terminal alkyne, and we saw that we could make aldehydes or ketones from it. So which one makes the aldehyde and which one makes the ketone? The boron one puts the O on the N to make an aldehyde, so that's molecule W. Remember, you're not changing the number of carbon molecules going from here to here or here to here. So please count your carbons and make sure your product has the right number. So I'm gonna draw the aldehyde for product W. How many carbons in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six, with a methyl on the second last one, six. There's the two carbons from acetylene, one, two. And then the rest, three, four, five, six, with a V here, and, the and I'm gonna copy that. Oh, maybe I'm not. Mm, I'm not. I need two copies of it. Three, four, five, six, V. And the aldehyde uh, using the HB SIA2 will go right here. And the ketone using the mercury will go on the other carbon of the alkyne. So remember, you want to make the ketone from here, use the mercury to get this. If you want to make the aldehyde from here, use the boron to make this. You need to know all the chemicals here. There are three, mercury sulfate, sulfuric acid, and water. Do not leave the water out. Without the water, there's no O. There's no new O there. In this one, it's two steps. Please make sure you indicate step one, step two. Or else I'll take off a quarter point, and you don't want that either. So that's how you make aldehydes. Use the hydroboration oxidation. And then any reagents that take U to be this product. So we're, we're going from here to there. And we've got to look at this thing here. It looks like I have the flipped version. So let's just, it's not letting me do what I want. I got that. It won't even let me grab that. So, no, I don't have my red bond either. I should have just started from scratch. Yeah, what do you know? The only reason I did that so that I could look at it up here. I know my C's are backwards and I didn't grab the red. 
bond. Oh, wow. Wonderful. It's a nightmare. Finally, I did that. So I could compare it up here. What's your remaining work to do? Well, I've got the whole left side of the molecule taken care of. Excuse my upside down C's. Uh, somehow I got to get this new carbon group on the right side. Well, how'd you get the carbon group on the left side? You took the H off and then added a carbon with a leaving group. Let's do that again, shall we? So the reagents to get from here to there Here we go. To there. One, take the H off. You want to just use H minus again. Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to kind of thing. H minus. You don't even have to give me a, a, a spectator. And then I need a, this five carbon group that has a leaving group on this position. Don't just randomly put a leaving group here, 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 or here. That's wrong. I need the bond. From this carbon to this carbon, I need the leaving group on this carbon. So step two, bromine, chlorine. We had chlorine before. You want to stick with it? Why not? Cl is attached to a CH2 attached to a cyclobutyl. Done. Reagents that would get me from here to here. And I'll flip this over again if I'm lucky, and I'm not. There we go. Those upside down C's are getting to me. There we go. And now I have to say, what's molecule X going to be if I use hydroboration slash protonolysis? And that gives a cis alkene. So here is the alkene, molecule X. And we'll put the two groups, cis, two, three, four, V, CH2, cyclobutyl. And molecule Y, that's how we make a transalkene, sodium metal and ammonia. So there's our transalkene. Same substituents on it. One, two, three, four, V, CH2 cyclobutyl. And there you have it. That's molecule Y. So on our test, you're going to have one question where you're supposed to make either an aldehyde or a ketone. And then you'll have another question where you're going to make either a cisalkene or a transalkene. Everything on this screen is useful for that question. So we have to master our reactions forwards before we start thinking about them backwards. That's what I'm saying. And here I stole two test questions from spring 2017's third test. And what are the stipulations here? Propose a retrosynthetic analysis. What the heck does that mean? for the target molecule that ends with the saturated alcohols of five carbons or less and acetylene. Please, if you don't know what acetylene is, this, skip this page. Skipping this page is 24 points down the tubes though. Mm, not a good idea. I think we better know what acetylene is. Okay, now this arrow is not a reaction arrow. This arrow means something very particular. Every time I draw that arrow, it means this. I'll type it. It's important. It's worth typing. I know how to make the molecule above the arrow from the molecule below the arrow. It's not a reaction. It's sort of an anti-reaction. And there's a reason why we have to think about these things this way. And we want that to be green. Uh, 
Okay. I know how to make the molecule above the arrow from the molecule below the arrow. I know how to make aldehydes. Well, let's see, don't, don't you remember how to make aldehydes? We have one aldehyde on this page and it's right here. How did you make it? What did you make it from? What was it before it was this aldehyde? Well, before it was this aldehyde, it was molecule U, which is this molecule. I can make that molecule into an aldehyde with the same number of carbons. This terminal alkyne can be made into this aldehyde with the same number of carbons. Look at it backwards. Where did the aldehyde come from? It came from this terminal alkyne with the same number of carbons. I need to draw a terminal alkyne with the same number of carbons. That's what's going right here. The molecule, I need to know, I know how to make the molecule above the, yes, I know how to make that from this. What was it before it was an aldehyde? It was a terminal alkyne with the same number of carbons. There's the terminal alkyne, two carbons, these two, one, two. What else is on there? The part that we're going to account for with our synthesis, four more carbons. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, and a stereo center here. Oh, this is tricky. It's tricky. Uh, I don't want to change the stereo. Oh, it's trickier than I thought. Don't want to change the stereo center, but it seems to be upside down. So that's the H here. If you're freaking out right now, just remember. The stereo center is S, it better be S here. One, two, three is the wrong answer. R is the right answer. Yeah, S is the right answer. R is wrong, S is right. And we're having trouble filling in our wedges here. It's a terrible looking wedge. Okay. If you're having trouble visualize that, try, uh, pretend you're doing this with it, take it and do that with it. All right, okay, and what's going on? We have that, and let's draw this arrow and see if you know what it means. What does this arrow mean? It means exactly what I said beside the other arrow. I know how to make the molecule above the arrow, so I know how to make this molecule from whatever is below the arrow. Okay. Well, how did I make the molecule before it became an aldehyde? Let's see, how did I make molecule? It was you, wasn't it? What did you come from? It came from T reacting with this orange piece. What was T? So you came from these two things, acetylide and a carbon with a leaving group that has the right number of carbons. Okay, acetylide is just the two carbons. And here we go. Acetylide is the two black carbons here. I know how to make that attack a carbon with a leaving group here. I'm gonna leave the wedge and dash to be determined, but I know I have a leaving group on there. And there's a reason I'm choosing BR in this question. If you look at this question very carefully, it says we're starting with alcohols of five carbons or less. So why didn't I put an alcohol there? Well, good reason. Uh, you can't have OH leave. OH minus is not one of my leaving groups. BR minus is, and it's on this list. Uh, sorry, this reaction here says I can convert an alcohol. Yeah, that's an alcohol to an alkyl bromide, alkyl bromide, that's a carbon with a leaving group by using this reaction that teacher's gonna give me on the test. So you really don't have a choice what leaving, uh, leaving group to use unless you wanna learn a whole bunch of new reactions ahead of time. This is a reaction that's ahead of time. Chapter 10, we're gonna learn this reaction. Right now I'm just saying, hey, it's there, use it. 
And there's a comment here about if the OH is on a stereo center, which, which it will be, then the stereo center will be inverted. Hmm. And one thing I didn't tell you about this backside attack, way back in the beginning of the day, backside attack right here. I'm going to tell you now, sort of, sorry, it's an aside. It's very distracting when I do that. I know. Let's just do that on a stereo center. Let's make that a CH3 and do this. And we'll have our uh, nucleophile attack there. And I want to show you something that's interesting. Attack that carbon, it leaves. And take a look at how it looks when you're done. The new bond is right here with a satellite on the left. And the ethyl group got pushed over here. The H got pushed over here. And the CH3. So the H got pushed over. CH3 is sort of like if you pretend you're the big bad wolf and you're blowing on this carbon here, all the other the things that are facing the wolf will be facing away from the wolf when we're done. And what happens to the stereo center is something that used to be R. And we're learning this right now for the first time. And this is, uh, it's, it's not R. Watch, it's clockwise here, right? Clockwise. But number four is on a wedge. So it's the wrong answers are the right answer is yes. So whenever you do one of these backside attacks, what happens to a stereo center? That's the take home message from this aside here. Stereo centers get inverted. You didn't know that till now. And let's put it to use with our new question. Stereo centers get inverted. So I need the stereo center to look like this when I'm done. And it's currently R. No, I take that back. It's currently S. I do one, two, three, and it's clockwise, but the four is on a wedge, not a dash. So this better be R, and right now I've got an extra methyl on it because I was deciding where to put the H. If it's on the dash, it's R. If it's on the wedge, it's S. I don't like that. So yeah, I need that alkyl bromide. And then tell me, I want to make these words always true, so I'm always going to be going down here. The green arrows mean the same thing every time. And yes, this is like a new language right now. Nobody's comfortable right now. There's lots of times in this course where that happens, right? Saying, what is this stuff? I know how to make this molecule. I know how to make the molecule above the arrow, this one, from whatever I draw down here. And you better use my useful information up here and you better say it's from an alcohol because I know how to make an alkyl bromide from an alcohol. Alcohol. And it says the stereo chem center gets flipped on this one too. So I'm going to have the H on a wedge and the methyl on the dash. And yep, there was a flip in this one too. S became R when we did the reaction here. And then R became S when we did the reaction here after we learned that this backside attack involved a stereochemical inversion. A lot of words, a lot of fancy stuff. It's gonna take a lot of practice. And where does this molecule come from? Acetylide is the conjugate base of acetylene. I know how to make that from acetylene, acetylene's on the list in the question, gets a circle. I allowed to end with acetylene. 
You're also, sorry, you're also allowed to end with alcohol, saturated acyclic alcohols, or just saturated alcohol, sorry. That means there's no pi bonds of five carbons or less. Look at this, one, two, three, four carbons. That's five or less. It's not a good circle though. So far, so good. And that is your retrosynthetic analysis. This aldehyde comes from this terminal alkyne. This terminal alkyne came from acetylide doing a backside attack on this alkyl bromide. This alkyl bromide came from this alcohol with four carbons. This acetylide came from acetylene. And after you've done that, you're going to show me the forward synthesis. And the forward synthesis, you start with those circles and you say how to make them into the things that they're supposed to be made into. How do you make acetylide from acetylene? We started our day with that. We had four ways to do it. Why don't you pick the easiest one? I mean, the easiest in terms of least writing, KH did a great job doing that for us. So now I have this piece, but I don't have this piece to react with it. I need to make this piece from this piece. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take that alcohol. And we're gonna react that alcohol with a chemical that's on the top of the screen. I mean, this is almost free points as long as you use things correctly. I don't know if you're hearing a lot of stuff that I'm hearing, but I think somebody's got their microphone on by mistake. And how do I, well, I didn't make the alcohol into anything there. Okay. We got a BR there. And let's see. Make this into the BR with a flipped stereo center. I'm just copying the molecule that's above it. That's an H. So how did I make this from this? Well, it tells us the chemical PBR3. You don't even have to know what it's called. If you're curious, it's called phosphorus tribromide. Don't need to know the mechanism. You just need to believe the box at the top of the screen and the information under it. And now we're at the stage where I have this chemical and this chemical. How do I get them to be this chemical? Uh, basically, you just introduce them to each other. You, uh, what's a good way to say I need to mix those chemicals? To me, this is a perfectly acceptable way to say mix those chemicals. Yeah, big parentheses, say this is going to join up with this and make this, and you're almost there. You're almost there. And there's a backside attack, which means the methyl ends up there. H ends up pushed back. Oops, that didn't involve pushing back at all. Step ahead of myself or behind myself, something. H is here. I did a backside attack using this nucleophile on this stereo center and R became S. And that's that. This is this. And then how do you get to the target? How do we get to the target? There's a symbol for target. I like this symbol here. Go red here. That might be too big. Oh. I swear I should be getting some kickbacks from Target for this. There you go. How do I make that into the Target molecule up here at the top of the screen? That's one of those four reactions we did previously. How do you make an aldehyde from a terminal alkyne? There's an aldehyde from an alkyne. I think it's better to look at this one where the, right from the book. How do you make an aldehyde from an alkyne? There's your chemicals right there. And we're going to have these reactions in our heads. Can't use the book on the test. 
So the chemicals were step one. Oh, that's very big. H B Sia two. Still hearing some noises. Somebody wants to kill their uh, sound, I think. Put it on mute. And that is our target molecule. You're going to make this from this by doing this reaction. 10 points. OK, ready to do it again with more synthesis this time? We've got this target molecule. This target molecule. We're allowed the same useful reaction at the top of the page. And I need to make this target molecule. And that's got what in it? Not an aldehyde or a ketone. Got a cis alkene. And we have a cis alkene. Cis alkenes are made from internal alkynes. And the internal alkyne has the same number of carbons. So we have an alkyne that this was before it became the alkene. And the alkyne looked like this, same number of carbons. Please make sure you have the same number of carbons. To the right of the alkene was one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, with a V. To the left of the alkene, which would be to the left of the alkyne, is one, two, three, four, with a methyl on the second one and a stereocenter. One, two, three, four. And the stereocenter, oh, because I drew it upside down again, I think I'm going to have the same problem. Better put the uh, H on the wedge, methyl on the dash. The stereocenter is the same. Uh, right now it is S. And it's S here. There was no changes. One, two, three is the wrong answer. S is the right. OK. I'm very distracted by the noises coming into my headphones right now. I've got to do something about it. So I'm going to find somebody to mute. Uh, maybe I can't. No, I just got a lot of noise from somebody I don't know. Oh, there. Got rid of it. Okay. I don't know if you saw any of that. All right. Back to reality. I know how to make this internal alkyne from this. Sorry. I know how to make this cis alkene from this internal alkyne. I know how to make the molecule above the arrow from the molecule below the arrow. I know how to make a cis alkene from an alkyne. Later on, you're going to show me how to do that. Right now, you're just saying, I know these carbons can be made into these. And now you've got choice. Now you've got choice. You can do the synthesis of this side or this side. And remember, this is the end of your synthesis. So this would be the last synthesis. And pick either side. Do you want to pick this side so you can stop drawing the stereo center more quickly? Uh, the question is, what about the stereo center? Remember, my little squiggle here just means I know how to make that bond. Just like I could have done the same story here and put a squiggle here, saying, I know how to make that bond. Mm, looks too much like an S up there. I know how to make this bond. How? By doing a backside attack on a carbon with a leaving group with this nucleophile. I did a backside attack on a stereo center, so R is going to change to S. Here, I see a stereo center, but it's not the carbon getting attacked. This CH2 is the one getting attacked. We have to know the nucleophile comes from acetylide. And the electrophile, the thing that gets attacked, has a halogen on it. 
When I give you a useful reaction that puts a bromine there, please use bromine as the useful molecule. And the stereo center is here. It did not get attacked. It did not change. Oops. Why I put H there instead of methyl, I don't know. That is not the carbon that gets attacked. It is this carbon right here. I'll put a dot there so you know that's a carbon. That's this carbon right here. And that's not a stereo center. And now the question is, where did this molecule come from? It came from an alcohol with the same number of carbons. And there's, once again, the alcohol was not on a stereo center. So there's no stereo center changing on this one. We've learned a lot in this. There's the alcohol. Circle it. Alcohols get a baby blue circle. And that's that. And where did this come from? Where did that come from? Well, that's an acetylide with an H missing. It came from the acetylide with the H there. You don't have to show me the H. Just don't draw a charge. That means there was an H there in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And that's it got the H on it. Where'd that come from? I know how to make that bond. Which side is the anion and which side is the carbon with the halogen? Well, when I wanted to make this bond, the anion is the acetylide. Please, it has to be acetylide every time you do synthesis for this test. You're going to learn a lot of other synthesis later, but you only got one synthesis reaction you've learned, and it's acetylide attacking a carbon with a halogen. So show me you know that. I need this to be acetylide. Acetylide. Anion. Bromine on the other carbon. Okay. And where's the acetylide anion come from? And where does the bromine alkyl bromide come from? That's a pretty lazy looking retro arrow there, but it's going to be a tall page. Might end up being real small writing. This came from acetylene. Circle it. Where do we get alkyl bromides from? They're not on the list of things you're allowed to start with. Molecule that ends with saturated alcohols. Mm. Well, HO with the same number of carbons. There you go. That is the end of the retrosynthetic analysis portion of this. Now let's put it together and do the whole synthesis. Why don't we worry about getting a target after we worry about these guys and the new color down here. That's an alcohol, five carbons or less. As was the other piece. The other piece down here. And let's start with these two down here. They're the last parts of my retro, which means they're the first parts of my forward synthesis. How do you make that into this? And how do you make this into this? KH all day for the top one. PBR3 for this one reaction I gave you. And then how do you make these two combine to make this? You make the meat. Just that parenthesis says, make them react with each other. Synthesis here, new bond, very exciting. One, two, three, four, V. You are currently here and need to be here. How do you get the H off of the terminal alkyne? You've already done it two steps previously. Tell me you know it's the exact same reaction now. One, two, three, four, V. K, H, or H minus. You pick. 
Now I have this piece that needs to react with this peach piece, but I, I don't have this piece. I have to make it first. So why don't you draw this molecule over here underneath somewhere? And I need to make it into this molecule here. And normally if, if the OH was on a stereo center, we get flipped, but the OH was not on a stereo center. So stereo center has no changes. How do you convert the alcohol into a bromine? You use this useful reaction that was at the top of the page, PBR3. Get points for it twice down here hands off. Somebody's trying to tell me it's almost time for a break. Now I have these two, these two, they need to combine to make this, which is called the penultimate molecule. Spelled pentultimate, second from last is what the penultimate means. And what we have here is, I'm just going to kind of copy that molecule from up there. Goes to a CH2, C triple C, one, two, three, four, V. And then the tension target shoppers. I don't think I'm going to be able to grab, I'm going to grab the dot. Mm, oh. Oh, did I get everything? I don't know. Should have started from scratch. I'm making a new target. And we're going to make that right there. How do I make my target from this alkyne? That's the question. Or the target molecule. It's at the top of the screen. Top left. What kind of alkene is that? Right there. Cis, how can I make an internal alkyne into a cis alkene? Go back one page, go back two page. That's on this page, it's but easier to see on this page. How do you make a cis alkene from an internal alkyne? Uh, BH3 acetic acid or H2 and Lindlar's catalyst. Boom, boom. Make sure you put one of those there. Uh, BH3. and HOAC, and you've made your cis target molecule, and you got a lot of points this time, 14. So that little overdue for a break, and I will see you in about 10 minutes, I think, with the larger segment rendering takes a little longer.